Okay, so we've got the Paris terrorist attacks and we've got ISIS doing bad stuff in Syria and basically the whole world is going to shit right now, but I'm playing Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, you know, it's time for some fun as well. I mean, I think those things are very important to talk about, but this is not the place where I should do that, so I'm not going to do that. I am going to talk about my uh, very late New Year's resolution, though. I'm going to try to not forget to compress my voice in my Let's Play episodes, because that just makes it sound less um, terrible, and in a sense, uh, a way to kind of mask the fact that you either have a bad ma microphone, or kind of make your uh, good microphone sound just a bit better, is just to compress your voice and actually do some good after editing on that stuff and that can make any voice good and stuff like that. I don't know why I keep forgetting to compress mine, it's just I keep forgetting everything in the world. Uh, why am I even asking that question? I don't know, I, f I think I forgot it. But anyway, it's it's time to focus on Rollercoaster Second 3 and something about this episode that I kind of want to say and yes, this episode is, um well, it's a little bit more than 12 minutes long, but that's still longer than the usual uh, episode as of lately, but I don't know if I'm actually going to continue that trend. It's, it's actually because of something that happened, but I'll explain that right now because I want to do that right away but then I got carried away okay anyway so I was kind of uh, I was just talking with friends on Skype when one friend was like hey I'm gonna stream <coughs> and I was like oh good idea so he streamed and we had a good time and then N7 went into the stream and we were like hey let's call and uh, N7 was like why am I not in there and uh, he joined and then someone else joined and then someone else joined and then party whoa and uh, I, I thought like hey I might do another Skype episode and for some reason people like that but now no I decided to not do that and this is not a Skype episode anymore because I kind of um, the, the conversations weren't really fit not for reasons um, that I would say it wasn't uh, entertaining or something, but it's kind of private matter, but yeah, that's it. But there is a problem that I have with this episode, though, recording that, because it didn't really uh, fit the idea of a time-lapse, at least not in my opinion, because as you can see, I'm building this station, and as you can see, this station is very weird, and that is because I didn't plan anything when it comes to this station. I was just like, okay, I'm, g I'm gonna do something new, well, this is not entirely new, but I just decided to take my station and do randomly build it. And I know that I usually do that, and it's not a new thing in that sense. But then again, I decided to place a couple of random roofs, random cornices, in very weird positions that don't make any sense, and then try to connect them, and I just hit my pop filter, and then try to connect them and see if I can actually get a decent station out of that. And even though I do like the end result, I actually like it a lot. I was actually very afraid that I would end up with a terrible station, but that's I suppose that's not really the case. But then again, it did take a bit of experiment stuff, and uh, that's why... I thought that this time-lapse was not too good to be time-lapsed, but as I look at it right now, it's not even that bad, honestly. But that's why there are no current Skype episodes. I don't know why they are so popular, really. I, I, sh I might start a new series or something, because like I've said, like I've stated multiple times, and I will keep doing that, because I want to get that point clear to everyone, is the fact that I don't do these videos to entertain people in a sense of, ha ha, look at me, I'm funny. Uh, no, it's it's more like, I either want to teach people how to play Rollercoaster Kid 3, or I just want to kind of be a show-off, and I suppose. Well, not really like that, but just kind of show what I've made, and uh, that's something people can enjoy as well. So that's kind of the point of my videos, and not really to be the next PewDiePie, and to have loads of fun with Cry and stuff like that. So, no, that's not going to happen. And I'm sorry if you are a fan of the of the um, Skype episodes, but in that case, I would probably say follow my streams or something because my streams are usually filled with random stuff and not being very serious and talking a lot with people. So that's that. And uh, do I have anything to say about that other than that? I don't think so. But then again, there's this station, and I'm like, what, what do I even, what do I even do with this? Because. This station really is one weird thing. As I look at it right now, it, all, it kind of reminds me of a train station in some ways. Actually, a train station with a Dutch kind of architecture, but I probably probably shouldn't mix that in because I was actually uh, I was actually playing back the recorded footage with uh, the Skype call, and there was some stuff about stuff like that, uh, as well as mentioning the th mentioning the theme of the ride. Why did I even do that? And that is a very hard theme, really.
because I oh hold on I need to get this right it's an alpine spooky uh, medieval industrial steampunk ride with castles and yeah I think that's it uh, factories did I mention that yet industrial no so I almost feel like that this roller coaster is kind of like the average Skrillex track or whatever EDM artist we have these days because there's so many subgenres and everybody's everybody's claiming to be a different subgenre. But in reality, most of the tracks in there are just a mix of many things, and that's kind of what this coaster is. It's kind of an uh, embodiment of EDM in that sense. But then again, I don't want to be associated with that when it comes to roller coasters. That doesn't make any sense. So yeah, but. I don't know why, but I just decided that that would be a good idea. And the more I look back at it, the more it seems like a terrible idea. But then again, it doesn't look that bad. And it's also a good subject to make jokes about. Really, you can make endless jokes about how terrible the ideas for the themes are in this park. And then jokes on everybody who made jokes on it in the end when the park is going to look good, I suppose. But I really can't say anything about that. And I can't judge it in a way like that, so... I'm sorry if I did that. And one of the one of the very weird things that I also did with this set, for some reason I decided to pick up some Roman style sets and just decided to mix those things in. I have no idea why I did that. I suppose it's just because the, the shapes kind of work. And there is actually kind of a reasoning behind that that I would like to um, give as advice to people. If you're watching and you kind of want to stick to a certain theme, you don't have to stick to scenery items of that theme. And this is something that I see many people actually do. And I think a majority of people actually do this. But it's kind of a restricting view when it comes to building buildings. Because as um, what, what you'll get if you do that is you'll get... You'll, for example, you make an alpine village. And the sets that you're going to use is going to be alpine village. One, two, three, uh, all the all the way up to six, and that's it. And most of the times, people will mix in a bit of birdhouse or a bit of catfish cove, but not really anything else. And I like it because, of course, you do get all of the right pieces and everything fits together. But then again, your all of your all of your parks with that theme will look alike. And same goes for everyone else. So every shy guy's village roller coaster is just going to kind of look the same. Of course, the buildings have different shapes and props are used in various ways. But then again, it's way too similar. And one way to kind of um, stand... Yeah, I don't know how to really explain it. One way to actually get your coaster to be unique without having a weird theme is to kind of stick with the theme but don't stick with the scenery sets of a theme. And that's kind of used in an absurd way in this roller coaster, of course, because the theme is alpine, medieval, spooky, industrial, steampunk. And I used a Roman set as well, but that doesn't necessarily mean that this thing is Roman. I just decided to use that for the textures. And one very good example that I would like to give is a stream that I watched yesterday of um, Jillrion. I, I, I don't know if I actually pronounced that right. I think it's Jillrion. I actually don't know, uh, but yeah, shout out to you, I suppose. And he actually, he was building a gothic kind of building. And he didn't use any gothic sets because the gothic sets out there, and if, I, if I'm if i being very honest, I don't like them either. They're just kind of meh. And many of them don't have too great textures and the models aren't that great either. So what he did is he actually built a gothic building using the Arabian Nights and Arabian Days by Ralphie's, as well as Ralphie's good old classical set. And now that doesn't really seem to make too much sense, of course, because classical and Arabian are already two types of, well, different things. And gothic is not really something that would go along with that. But in the end, I would say that it actually worked very well. The building actually really looked like it was a gothic building and even though it didn't use any um, true gothic sets you don't need specific sets to build specific kinds of themes and that's a message that I would like to get across to people and I almost just I almost just hit my oh my god I keep hitting things on my desk I'm sorry okay I'm getting way too distracted and at this point I was like foliage yeah I suppose that's going on actually I do like the foliage but I, I felt that it needed many more flowers 
And as you all know, I love flowers, so of course I went overboard with the flowers. I don't know if it's too much. It is next to the path though, so it seems doable. But in the end, it's many flowers and you barely even see them because there's a fence in front of it. So Silverette was being stupid today, but I needed something to fill up that space. And what better thing is that than flowers, really? And I think the rest is just, yeah, flowers. Because flowers are amazing, really. I don't know why, I just love them. And I, I would like to say that if you want to do flowers, if you want to do something with flowers, you should always keep in mind, as with much of the foliage, but not as much with the foliage that you don't need to maintain, to keep it close to the paths and don't place flowers on top of each other because flowers need room to grow, of course, but also you need room to maintain your flowers. So like I said, I'm glad that I actually placed these next to the paths because if you don't do that, then your handyman are gonna have to, well, um, that's, you don't have any handyman in Rollercoaster Good 3 as uh, custom scenery parks, of course, but let's say our imaginary handyman are gonna have to go over the fence and jump over some buildings and parkour all the way up to the roof of the building and then jump off a la Spider-Man to f give some flowers some more love. That doesn't really seem to make too much sense. So I would like to say keep all your flowers close to the paths and um, keep all your uh, enemies close and your friends or something. Anyway, that's the episode. So thanks for watching and bye. See you in the next one.